So, <laughs> hello friends. I welcome all of you to this Amit Sena IAS Academy, an online initiative. So, as I uh, have already spoken to all of you in my earlier videos, that we are discussing currently the modern India that is uh, completely based upon the NCERT, written by Pipan Chandra. So, this is one of the most prescribed books for civil service examination. All right. So, I am primarily focusing upon the NCRT's content, all right, so that you can actually understand the significance of going through the NCRT. So, let me now uh, start from the last video that I actually have uploaded on the issue of the kinetic wars. So, if you remember, I did mention to all of you that, uh, that in chapter number 2 of the NCERT, it mentions about that how British East India uh, Company was able to establish its footings uh, here on the Indian soil uh, one by one after defeating various other powers, original powers in India. So in the list of that only, uh, I was discussing in my earlier video that how they were able to defeat uh, the Nawab of Bengal uh, whether by treachery or even by the having a frontal war uh, like uh, Battle of Plassey and Battle of Baksar. So I have already discussed about that aspect in my earlier video. Now this particular video is going to be for the next aspect of chapter number 2 that how were they, uh, how the British East India Company was able to further expand uh, their ex uh, you can say territories beyond Bengal also. So now let me explain to you that Bengal as I told you all, already <coughs> that it acted as a calm tenu. Uh, for the British East India Company in terms of giving them the huge resources and this actually made them uh, self-reliant here on the Indian soil and afterwards they were not actually taking the money from England rather the money from India was only being used for two purposes one was for the training commerce and second one was also for uh, indulging into war and conquest for their further expansion in India so if you see what was done after 1764 that is battle of Baksar <coughs> I told you in the last class last video also that in 1765 uh, the Britishers were able to establish their dual system of uh, government in Bengal now I told you briefly there also that dual system of government means that the uh, administrative affairs and the financial affairs were separated alright and how they separated they separated in the context of their own benefit for example what they did, they had separated uh, Nizamat and Diwani rights. So Nizamat rights were given to the 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 deputy Subeda, uh, of course, under the Nawab of Bengal, and on the other hand, the entire Diwani rights, that was financial rights, were under the in the hands of the British company only. So <coughs> this is how they bifurcated the entire system of administration, and most importantly, they bifurcated to satisfy their uh, urge or their you can say need in terms of uh, using resources for the further expansion of the empire across India and you can simply understand that in this particular looting of India which started from this particular event only that is after the battle of uh, Baksar and Plassey of course in this looting of India even the British government was equally a complicit he, when British government was equally complicit how we can sub, um, substantiate this fact now British government after this particular event of the 1764 battle of Baksar and having the divine rights into the hand of the British company of course even the government of Britain they also started taking some charges some revenue from the company which was somewhere around you, uh, the uh, British pound that was 4 million annually so 4 million British pound was also taken as a sort of you can say uh, the guarantee payment from the company by the British government and this is how the so called looting of Indian resources or drain of wealth of India started uh, you know, on a very organized scale or a very large and mass scale in this country. So in this context you can see that uh, the acquisition of Bengal was the biggest position for the British company in India and then afterwards their further agenda of expansion in different parts of India started on a very large scale all right and therefore what we see we see that their uh, intervention in the affairs of the regional kingdoms in Deccan and other parts of India as well for example of course Lord uh, Warren Hastings and uh, Lord Cornwallis now they all actually have been very instrumental in providing a base 
for the British East India Company to further expand their area of influence. So what actually happened that in <coughs> between 1772 to 1785, Warren Hastings was the Governor General of Bengal. So of course with this particular uh, activity only when he was Governor General, he was trying to expand the influence of the British company in the Deccan especially. In the Deccan there were three major powers, Hyderabad, Mysore and Marathas. So Mysore issue we have already discussed uh, already in my earlier lecture. Now the second issue was Marathas. So Marathas was another power which actually had to be decimated before their full expansion, you can say full acquisition of the territories of India. So in the context of that only, these all governor generals started playing their role. But the most important role was played by uh, Wellesley. So Wellesley was another very important governor general between 1798 to 1805. Now this particular governor general who actually had a very uh, you can say serious purpose in terms of uh, decimating the power of uh, the original kingdoms of India, especially Maratha. So he was, uh, of course, a person who actually laid down the entire, uh, you can say, the, the concept of subsidiary alliance, uh, especially in the context of the British company. However, subsidiary alliance, I told you already in my earlier video that it was a brainchild of Duple, the French governor, who actually started using subsidiary alliance in their own favor. But the uh, the subsidiary alliance as a concept was given a formal shape shaped by the uh, the governor general of uh, of bengal of course wellesley so wellesley was instrumental in doing that and therefore wellesley was instrumental not only in decimating the hyderabad or mysore power under tipu sultan but also the marathas were equally the most important you can say entity for the british company in terms of their final final expansion now, the Maratha issue is important for all of you. I have discussed it briefly in my earlier videos. Now, today I am going to discuss it elaborately, the anglo maratha war. Now, see, uh, Wellesley's, issue, Wellesley's role in the Maratha issue, issue was very much complicit because he was a person who actually led the uh, Marathas to sign the Treaty of Subsidiary Alliance. So, we have to discuss about Subsidiary Alliance also today. Fine, because that's what actually has also been discussed in the NCRT of Chapter 2. Because from this issue, you can be asked a question straightforward in the main examination that what was the concept of Subsidiary Alliance and how did it impact not only the British Empire to expand further but also to decimate the original kingdoms of India. Fine. So this question can be uh, asked to you in the mains also. So we will discuss also shortly about subsidiary alliance. But before that, let us just try to see the anglo maratha war. Now see, the anglo maratha wars. Now there have been three anglo maratha wars. <coughs> Alright. And those three anglo maratha wars have been very nicely depicted on the board. Just to shorten down the the, the you can say the time being taken over here i have already drawn this particular chart for all of you to understand that see i'm starting with the i'm starting with the first anglo maratha war the first anglo maratha war was fought between 1775 to 1782 fine now this particular war why was it fought just try to understand it was fought because of one pump fundamental reason and that was there was an issue of uh, succession. There was a conflict of succession in the Maratha Confederacy and the most important thing that I already discussed also uh, in the earlier video that Maratha Confederacy was a group of five confederates all right and of course after the uh, demise of Balaji Bajirao of course these confederates started fighting against each other to acquire the power in the Maratha Confederacy. So that actually was the reason behind the outbreak of the first war but see what was the reason behind that very precisely. The Treaty of Surat. The Treaty of Surat was what? Raghunath Rao was one of the claimants of the Maratha uh, authority in the press press was basically. And of course it was being challenged by Madhav Rao II. And Madhav Rao II <coughs> was the uh, another uh, of course legitimate claimant of the Maratha power. And he was being supported by Nana Fadnavis of Fadnavis. So Nana Fadnavis of Fadnavis supported Madhav Rao II against Raghunath Rao. So Raghunath Rao of course, he wanted to capture the power even after <coughs> defeating Madhav Rao too. Now, it is said that Raghunath Rao was also attacked by the Holkars. Holkars and because of that only, Raghunath Rao went to the Britishers and signed a treaty of Surat. So, the uh, Bombay presidency 
at least signed this treaty of Surat in 1775 with Raghunath Rao. In this treaty, the promise was made to Raghunath Rao that British company will support their claim to become the next Peshwa of the Marathas. Yes, sir, Treaty of Surat. Now, in this treaty, ke antargat, <coughs> of course, the problem had to be cropped up. Now, on the other hand, Madharav II was the legitimate claimant of the Peshwa, a Peshwa ship there over, over in the Marathas. Nana Fadnis was the most important, you can say, uh, person at that point of time. He was the main architect of the Maratha Confederacy at that point of time. Fine. So, Nana Fadnis was supporting Madharav II at that point of time. Now, in this particular background, the war took place between the Marathas and the English forces. So, in the first war, what happened? The Britishers actually had to witness both mixed bag of results. For example, <coughs> they witnessed a defeat in 1779 in Wadgao. So, Wadgao, in the Battle of Wadgao, Britishers got defeated. Why? Because Nana Fadnavis signed an alliance, a pact with Holkar, with Bhosles, and they all actually came together and defeated the Britishers here in Wadgao. But on the other hand, in Gwalior, the Britishers were successful in capturing the region of Gwalior of Sindhyas. So, this actually was the background in which this war was being fought between uh, the English and the Marathas. Now see, was, <coughs> was the issue of succession only important factor <coughs> for the Marathas to, uh, so for the English to intervene into the Maratha issue of succession? So answer is no. The issue was basically the cotton trade. Now this question can be asked to you in prelims cotton trade the cotton trade which english was english or british company was involved from india to china from china to of course england so this cotton trade was the major factor for the bombay presidency to intervene into there cotton was being produced in surat and surat was under the marathas influence so they wanted to remove the marathas influence outrightly from surat so that they, sh they should enjoy a complete monopoly over the cotton Trade, all right. So cotton trade के कारण उन्होंने intervene किया था. ये major region है. ठीक है. ये आपको याद रखना है. Prelims में सवाल आपसे पूछा जा सकता है. So now see in this particular fact only. So what happened? This war was going on, and finally in 1782, Treaty of Salvai, Britishers actually understood very clearly they they will not be able to defeat the Maratha Confederacy in one go. So they were very sharp enough when they were about to get defeated, they used to sign a pact of peace. So, a Treaty of Salvai provided a pact of peace for both the Marathas and the British company. So, in this particular Treaty of Salvai, the what, why the Treaty of Salvai was signed by the English? Because of two factors. One, in the Battle of Vadgao, they had already got defeated. Second, the Britishers were fighting already with Mysore. With Mysore. Now, understand. On one front, they were fighting with Mysore, with Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. On the other hand, they were also fighting with, of course, the Marathas. So, two frontal war was not a cup of tea for the Britishers at that point of time. So, obviously, they signed a peace treaty with the Marathas under Treaty of Salvai, in which Mahaji Sindhya and Warren Hastings, so Warren Hastings, of course, was the Governor General, who actually was the signatories of this Treaty of Salvai. So, Treaty of Salvai was signed and then Salsatin Basai, which was captured by the Marathas, from the Britishers, it was actually under the Portuguese, Portuguese gave to the Britishers. So this was again given back to the Britishers. And then Mother of Two, he was the same Mother of Two, he was recognized as a legal heir. It was recognized that he was a legal peswa in Marathas. So this was a very big achievement for that time, that the Britishers had accepted it. But what happened? Mother of Two, of course it is said that because of some of the other factors or tension that was going on inside the Maratha court because Nana Fatnavis was equally very influential person. He was the person who was actually being acknowledged by all the Maratha Sardars. So, Mother or Two did suicide commit. And that's why in 1795, Mother or Two, he passed away. Why he committed suicide? Because of the intervention of Nana Fatnavis more often in the affairs of court. All right. So, he committed suicide and finally he passed away. Now, once he passed away, again, Peswa Bajirao II. Now, he claimed the entire throne of the Maratha Confederacy. 
So Peshwa Bajara too claimed the throne and at the same time, even Nana Fatnavis, he also died because he was an old age person, he also died in 1800. So in 1800 when Peshwa Bajara too didn't have Nana Fatnavis, now obviously he was the main person to actually not only provide a unity among the Maratha confederacy but also provided a security to the Peshwa Bajirao II. Now once he was also out of the scene, Nanda Fatnavis, then again there was a problem there in the court of Peshwa's court of Marathas. And what was the problem? Problem was that Sindhyas and Holkars, especially Holkars. So Holkars, they were not liking Peshwa Bajirao II. Holkars were in support of Nanda Fatnavis and since till, till he was alive, they were supporting the peace wars. But once he was out, they did not support Bajira too. So of course Holkar had started even attacking the areas of Pune. So it is said that Pune was attacked by Holkar and he was also looted completely by Holkar. That was the kind of you can say political integrity that was there between the Maratha Sardars. So Holkar attacked Kardia or Peswa Bajira too. Isko laga dar ki ab kya hoga. So what he did, he went directly to the court of Britishers. So he went to the Britishers and signed Treaty of Basain. So Treaty of Basain was signed in 1802. Now this was a very landmark treaty. Treaty of Basain was the beginning of subsidiary alliance treaty with the Marathas. All right. So subsidiary alliance treaty was finally signed under Treaty of Basain with whom? With Peswa Bajirao II by the English. And by this time already Lord Wellesley Lord Wellesley had come into power. He, he became the Governor General in 1798 only. And Lord Wellesley actually has had a very remarkable forward policy of the British East India Company. So for under the forward policy, they wanted to acquire more and more territories either directly or indirectly. Fine. So in that way only, Satsuri Alliance was actually also pushed forward for the Marathas in this particular Treaty of Basain. The Treaty of Basain was instrumental in the context of subsidiary alliance. We will discuss subsidiary alliance after completing this particular segment. So what was done? Subsidiary alliance was signed again here in 1802. Now see, once it was signed between the Peswa Bajirao II and the English British company, now of course the Maratha Sardars, they were not going to accept this treaty. And therefore, Sindhya and Bhosle, they were the first who rejected the Treaty of Basain. They rejected the Treaty of Basain and because of that only Second anglo maratha War took place. So Second anglo maratha War kyo hua? Kyoki Sindhya or Bhosle ne Treaty of Basain ko reject kar diya. Kyo? Kyoki ye sign kya gaya tha Peswa Bajar aur Tuke dwara aur inko ye alliance treaty pasand nahi tha. Isliye inhone isko reject kiya or reject kiya to fir ab inke saath British East India Company ko war karna tha. To ab inke saath war hua and in this particular war that is second anglo maratha war fought between 1803 to 1805. Fine. In this war of course Sindhya and Bhosle both were massively defeated. Badly defeated by the British Company. Tono ko haraya British Company ne aur harane ke baad kya kiya? Treaty of Devgaon, ये क्वेश्चन पूछा जाता है। Treaty of Devgaon was signed with Bhosle, all right? And Treaty of Surji Arjan Gaon was signed with Sindhya. ये दोनों treaty क्या था? एक तरह का सबसे लैंस treaty ही था। इनको भी कहा कि तुम हारने के बाद सबसे लैंस treaty sign करो, तुम्हारा territory भी आप लेंगे और ये लैंस treaty भी sign करता होगा तुम्हें। तो ये treaty दोनों जो sign किया, ये important नाम देख लीजिए। Treaty of Devgaon and Sarji Arjan Gaon with Sindhya. So Devgaon with Bhosle and Treaty of Sarji Arjan Gaon, Surji Arjan Gaon with Sindhya. So these two treaties were signed in the second anglo maratha war. So with this situation was now under the control of the British power. Now see, the third anglo maratha war was fought in 1817 to 1818. Now this Maratha war was fought because of Lord, Lord Hastings. Now Lord Hastings followed a very aggressive policy that is known as policy of paramouncing. Policy of paramouncing was followed by 
लॉर्ड हैस्टिक्स नोट ऑफ पॉलिसी ऑफ पैराबाउंड से प्रोसी पैराबाउंड से वाज दैट वेयर एवर इट इज पॉसिबल टू डोमिनेट टू कंट्रोल टू कॉन्क्वेस्ट द टेरिटरीज इन इंडिया द कंपनी मस्ट इन्वॉल्व इनटू दैट नाउ व्हाई इट इज बी इट वाज बीइंग डन जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड टू ऑलरेडी अंडर द फॉरवर्ड पॉलिसी देयर वाज लॉट ऑफ यू कैन से एक्सपेंडिचर डन बाय द कंपनी ऑन द वॉर्स एंड कॉन्क्वेस्ट so the government out there in britain they actually reprimanded reprimanded court of directors reprimanded the company not to involve in the war and what happened again after removal of lord wellesley lord cornwallis was reappointed as the next governor general of india so it was done it was done why to stabilize the income of the company unko matlab sirf income passes tha war se nahi tha वॉर तो इसलिए करना था कि उससे थ्रू उसको पैसा मिलेगा उसके थ्रू टेरिटरी को पाई होगा और से वो पैसा कमाएंगे पैसा ऑफ कोर्स रेज करेंगे उसको वहां इंग्लैंड में भेजेंगे सो ऑफ कोर्स दिस दिस सिचुएशन वाज देयर बिकॉज ऑफ दैट ओनली लॉर्ड कॉर्नवालिस वाज रीअपॉइंटेड आफ्टर रिमूवल ऑफ वेलेस्ली नाउ आफ्टर हिम व्हेन लॉर्ड कॉर्नवालिस अगेन प्रोवाइडेड स्टेबिलिटी इन द इनकम नाउ लॉर्ड हैस्टिंग्स व्हेन ही केम इनटू पावर नाउ ही फॉलोड एवरी एग्रेसिव पॉलिसी इज नोन एज policy of paramount sea so under this policy of paramount sea again he wanted to expand the territories wherever it is it is possible in the quest of that only what we see treaty of puna was forced to be signed under the aegis of lord hastings now elphiston was the british resident in the court of puna where peswas was sitting so peswa was asked to leave this tendency to become the supreme head of marathas to unko chahiye tha ki marathas ko wo tod de break kar de iske karan treaty of puna unse sign karwaya gaya peswa ke sath for pe sohi bajra to usko bola ki tum bhul jao ki tum maratha sardar ke fir leader banoge is cheez ko hatao dimag se theek hai treaty of puna was signed forcefully now iske baad peswa bajra to he started looking forward to replace britishers altogether from the internal affairs of maratha court so what he did he united the maratha sardars and here he was successful in uniting with bhosle and holkar so bhosle aur holkar ke sath fir se ye mila utke sath pact kiya aur kaha ki hum log sath milke britishers ko pehle hatae fir apna internal issues hum rectify kar lenge so sath milke wo फिर से एक अलायंस बनाया और इसी अलायंस में पिंडारीज पिंडारीज को काफी यूज किया जाता था होलकर और भोसले के द्वारा पिंडारीज भी पिंडारीज कौन थे पिंडारीज एक ट्राइबल ग्रुप था एक बराडर्स ग्रुप था जो कि मराठा एम्पायर के अंदर रहते थे 